Yeah. Okay, guys, we are super excited about our next guest. British astronaut Tim Peake is currently orbiting the Earth in the International Space Station. And here to tell us all about it is Ireland's top astronomer, David Moore. David, welcome to the show. Ah, thank you very much. So, how does someone even get picked to become an astronaut and travel out to space? It's quite difficult because everybody wants to go into space and you need qualifications, but you don't have to have the right stuff that they used to have in the early days. So if you do a science degree or you're a pilot, you're in with a chance. We had selections in 1991 for Ireland, mm -hmm. uh, 700 people applied. Even I had a go. Did you? Uh, you I'm, applied in I got to the last four, but oh. nobody was picked in the end from Ireland. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. And then <laughs> 1997, there was another round, uh, there was another one in the early 2000s. And 2008, Tim Peake applied along with 8,000 other people. Wow. And he, as he says himself, he was surprised that as the selection process went on, they whittled the numbers down. He kept getting picked until he was the man. Yeah. He trained to go into space, and here he is. Uh, look, he's all up there on the International Space Station till June. Wow, and I, do you have any idea what kind of things might have made him, you know, the right candidate? Or like, how, how did you pick? Yeah, well, he, he had a history of flying, so he, he flew for the, uh, the, 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 for the um, Royal Air Force in okay. the UK. But then he became a civilian helicopter test pilot. Uh -huh. So obviously he's got great experience in flying, obviously excelled. That would have all counted right. a lot during his interview. How did he go about his training? How do you teach someone to be an astronaut? Well, uh, there's, there's, there are years of training involved. First of all, you're running experiments on board the space station. It's a huge laboratory in space, and you're helping the scientists on the ground who have done that. So they, you also have to maintain the space station. You had to do a spacewalk, for instance, so they put you into a big tank of water. I think we have footage of that. Yes. And that's the closest you can get to being weightless on the ground, floating cool. around the big tank with your heavy spacesuit on. You don't feel the weight of it there. And that's great practice, and it's difficult to use tools with these big cumbersome space. Space suits that are and protecting you from space. And, that's, and there they are going through a checklist yeah. here just b uh, uh, before their launch. That's the pool where they do oh, the wow. underwater testing. Okay. It's a huge pool. Uh, it's quite dangerous. If anything goes wrong, you're underwater, you could drown, but there's lots of obviously, divers around to protect them. Mm -hmm. They're very safety conscious in space. What exactly is his mission? What well, is up there? Uh, as I said, he'll be doing lots of experiments for the scientists on the ground. You're weightless in space, and there's lots of things you can do in weightlessness that are very hard to do on the ground. So you can try and develop new chips for super fast computers was one big thing. New drugs to help cure cancer and oh, things okay. like that. And, and what about the ordinary day stuff, like, you know, just washing yourself or feeding yourself? Like, how do they go about that? Yeah, it's completely different. So you yeah. can't have a shower in space. You can't eat a plate of, of peas and, and potatoes because they'll float off into space. Oh, yeah, we can see Tim uh, here. There is a is very there. important. Here is making some coffee, and you can't have it in a cup because it will float all around the space station and get into the equipment. So you drink it through a straw. I wonder what it tastes so he like. So he rehydrated that coffee? Yeah. <laughs> Exactly, okay. the coffee, hot water into it, and it, it tastes, they say, very similar. The food doesn't <laughs> taste as good, they say, on the space station. Because we use our nose, actually, to help with, with flavours. You don't oh, realise it. Yeah. You can't smell your food. Try holding your nose when you're eating your dinner this evening. See if it tastes the same. And the, the smells don't waft around in space like yeah. they do here on the, on the ground. And uh, one of the most uh, technically difficult things that Tim has had to do uh, was his spacewalk that he did in January. He did the spacewalk with another one of his colleagues. Uh -huh. uh, they had a problem at the end. Spacewalks typically last up to about eight hours or so. It's a long time to be stuck in a space suit. Oh, we can see him here now. Yeah. So, this is uh, so they had, they had, it was a bit of an emergency. They, there's often things go wrong on the space station. It's huge, it's about the size of Croke Park. Things can go wrong. They had to get out and fix things. So, okay. that's what they, so they're also, as well as guinea pigs and lab technicians, they're also caretakers and they had to get outside and change things and his colleague's spacesuit developed the leak and water started leaking into it so they had to cut the mission short. But fortunately nothing bad went wrong. But these things okay. happen in space and they're trained for all those kind of eventualities. Wow. <laughs> and I suppose one of the biggest rewards the astronauts get is that they get to see the view of Earth and space oh, yeah. so oh, yeah. while they're up there. I mean I, when I applied for the astronaut you know uh, there was a good salary going with it but I would have done it for free yeah. mm. <laughs> and so would most of In fact I think six people have paid 30 million dollars each million. to go up to the space station for 10 days and you the cheapest ticket I know to go for a few minutes is about 200,000 so you're talking the price of a house but this is the kind of view oh, you yeah. get. So what are we seeing here, Dave? We're, we're coming up over Europe here. You see the flashes are all the lightning going on what? below That's the clouds. Lightning. lightning from oh, above. Wow. Like a strobe. <laughs> yeah, and you can see roughly a country worth of landscape below you. So you see all the flashes going off at the same time. This is speeded up, by the way. And what about the, um, the a halo above the Earth there? The what? Yeah, the thin line. That's our atmosphere, the oh, limit okay, of, of this thin shell that we rely on. Uh, that without, we, 
we would, couldn't live. So everything happens under that thin shell. It just shows how delicate the earth is and why we need to protect it. So what is Ireland's involvement in the whole thing? Well, Ireland is a member of the European Space Agency. Rockets are actually, parts of rockets and software systems are, are built in Ireland. There are over a thousand people working on it. We can apply for astronaut jobs. I'm not looking for any at the moment, but in a few years they will be. So keep an eye on the European Space Agency website. Remember we're part of it. And actually you can see the International Space Station flying over Ireland. The next time is going to be in early April for about two weeks every evening. And we actually put predictions on Astronomy On's website telling you when to see it from Ireland and anything else interesting. It could be little space chasers, a new craft goes up. Thank you so much for coming in. It's been absolutely right, fascinating. Pleasure. And make sure to keep us updated with Tim as well. I certainly will. We hope to invite him to Ireland. Yeah. Once he's come back in June and been debriefed for a few months. Brilliant. Maybe we'll bring him on the show. Oh, well, hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed. Yes. Here, here, Tim. <laughs> so, anybody who wants to get involved or know a little bit more about Tim Peak, what's happening on the ISS or anything else, make sure you check out the European Space Agency website because there is loads to sink your teeth into.